Hey there, my friends, Derek from Bomb Socks here with another day of Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So as I mentioned yesterday, Jesus, back in Matthew 22, said, You love God and you love your neighbor, and on these two commandments hang all the rest of the law. So like I said yesterday, you take the Ten Commandments, and you're going to see how those fit in so nicely with that. So these first four commandments have everything to do with loving God. First of all, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And then remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So I want to focus on the reasons why those should be commandments that we really focus on and really understand because I really believe all of this has to do with understanding who God is and why it is so important to develop a relationship with him and to love him. Well, verse number five in Exodus chapter 20 can be a little confusing if you're not careful with it because he's in the midst of talking about these don't make any graven images, don't make idols, don't put any other gods before me. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now, let me pause there for a second because last time I checked, jealousy is not a godlike attribute. It's not a Christ like attribute. You're like, I just want to be more jealous. No, I think that comes naturally to us. The natural man within us is jealous in nature. But you click on the word jealous there and it gives you a Hebrew word. I think it's kana, which means possessing sensitive and deep feelings. Now, even there, it just seems like. Like here's God, this sensitive person that you just don't want to hurt or offend. Now, uh, there's a cool quote I did come across from Elder Oaks where he does talk about what that means, that possessing sensitive and deep feelings. Thus, we offend God when we serve other gods and we have other first priorities. Now, again, I don't want to make God sound like he is just this, you know, this individual who's just like, why aren't my people following me? And there is a sensitive nature and I don't want to make light of that, but it's not that God God's self-worth is dependent upon whether or not we love him or not. You know, you look at this, why does God demand our devotion? Why does he ask us not to make idols? Why does he want us to put him first? And if you really think hard about this, it is not about him. Even though it is about him, <laughs> I know this sounds kind of weird, it's not about him, it is, it is about us. You think about God's work in glory. Moses 139 says, For behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man, of us. It's not, this is my work and my glory, to make sure that I am awesome and I stay awesome. It, it's not that. He demands our devotion not for his sake, but it is for our sake. So if we can remember one of the reasons he asks us to keep the Sabbath day holy, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, that is within that love God. Um, it's not about him. It's not about him just sitting there, just like my people need to obey me. It's about developing a relationship. He wants to be able to develop a relationship with us. And he wants us to develop a relationship with him because he knows that he has the abilities to bless us and his glory is to help bring us back. And so that's why he asks us and demands our devotion, if I can use that term. It's for our sake and not for his. That's why, like for example, I had someone bring this up one time. Um, there's a verse in section 64 of the Doctrine and Covenants where it talks about uh, forgiveness. Now this, this also has to do with the loving others, but it talks about how if we do not forgive others, it remains in us the greater sin. Now, if we choose not to forgive others, we are putting ourselves as a higher judge than God, which takes you to that first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? And you don't want to break that commandment. But again, the idea there is God wants us to follow him. He wants us to put him first because he recognizes that that is going to bless our lives. Now, again, it is about him. It's, there's a fine line there, and I know that can sound confusing, Using, but it is about him. It's about obeying him. It's about learning how to love him so that we can gain the blessings that he has. He wants us to have those blessings. He wants us to be like him. He is trying to prepare us to be like him. That's why he gives us these commandments to be like him. And I love that idea there. Any good loving parent, and I, I, you know, I'm a parent. I am a very imperfect parent. All you parents out there, you're imperfect and you give your children rules and you're trying your best to explain 
explain why you do this, but ultimately it is not about you. It is about them. And it's about them learning how to build a relationship with you and with God, most importantly with God. And so that's why he gives us these first four commandments is to build that relationship with him, to love him. And as we learn to love him, then we will learn to love our fellow men. So I decided to look in general conference, this last general conference, April of 2022, about what it means to love God and why he asks us to do that. So I came across Elder D. Todd Christofferson's talk, which is called Our Relationship with God. It's that these first four commandments here. So I want to share with you his story. In fact, I'm going to let him share it because this example, I think, is perfect on why God wants to have a relationship with us. Elder Brooke P. Hales related the story of Sister Patricia Parkinson, who was born with normal eyesight, but by age 11 had gone blind. Elder Hales recounted, I've known Pat for many years and recently told her that I admired the fact that she's always positive and happy. She responded, well, you've not been at home with me, have you? I have my moments. I've had rather severe bouts of depression, and I've cried a lot. However, she added, from the time I started losing my sight, it was strange, but I knew that Heavenly Father and the Savior were with me, my family and me. Those who ask me if I am angry because I am blind, I respond, who would I be angry with? Heavenly Father is in this with me. I am not alone. He is with me all the time. In the end, it is the blessing of a close and abiding relationship with the Father and the Son that we seek. It makes all the difference and is everlastingly worth the cost. We will testify with Paul that the sufferings of this present mortal time are not worthy to be, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I bear witness that no matter what our mortal experience may entail, we can trust God and find joy in Him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Anyway, I love that little message because, again, it's all about building that relationship with God. These first four commandments are about learning how to love God. And as we do that, the rest of everything else falls into its proper places, which is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for sharing these messages. We love that you do that. Please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.